Today, I want to show you guys the solar battery backup system I created for my apartment. 99% of the components were bought and delivered by Amazon during my March to June COVID home lockdown, just in time for my state's summer power shutoff season. In my state, I can experience the power being shut off for two main reasons. Number one is the main reason why I started this project, and it involves the utility company de-energizing their transmission lines during periods of high wind to stop them sparking and creating wildfires. These shutoffs can be of a very long extended period of time, and the record time I saw was in 2019, and it was three continuous days in a row. The second reason is good old-fashioned rolling blackouts. This is when the state's infrastructure cannot handle the amount of electricity demand compared to the amount of supply. The utilities will shut off various neighbourhoods for two to three hours at a time on a rotational basis to share the pain and suffering. The only positive thing about that is you do know when one is scheduled and the two to three hour outage can be managed easily with this battery backup system. Here are the primary goals of the system. These are the requirements as defined by the good wife. 1. The battery solution must be discreet and not embarrassing to her when her friends come over. 2. The fridge must be kept on at all times. As good little preppers, we both have a rule to keep the freezer stocked full of meat and the fridge as full as possible with supplies. Losing power to the fridge and having the supplies spoil and go bad will be quite expensive and tedious to replace. And 3. The wife must never not have access to the internet. This is crucially important, and I believe it has something to do with some candy-related iPhone game she has, but I'm not entirely sure. So before I get into the main battery system, I want to show you what really is the backbone of everything. This APC battery backup, which is located in my TV cabinet. I was going to buy this automatic transfer switch that can be reverse wired to act like a UPS, but I didn't like the fact that it didn't have a proper ground line. The APC battery backup has the ability to take over when the grid power fluctuates away from 120 volts too much. Very handy in a third world country when power is not stable or constant. It also filters the power and gives me peace of mind that all of my electronic gadgets are safe from the green power revolution. I've been a fan of IKEA's Billy bookcases for a while now and I've collected quite a few of them. I saw some space next to the three large bookcases and thought it was a good place to squeeze another half size one next to them as the battery backup system. A long extension cable runs from this location around the room to the TV AV cabinet. My home office is also powered from the APC UPS, as is all of the lighting and all of the other gadgets. A grid power outlet is located behind the bookcase, and so is the hole going outside to the balcony. The first exciting moment I had when brainstorming this system was the revelation that this battery fits nicely into the IKEA Billy bookshelf. When I went to purchase the Billy, I grabbed an extra six shelves to use as walls. I'm not sure if I used all six, but I did saw into a couple to make a mount for the charger. I originally purchased only one battery just to see if the system worked and then added a second one a few weeks later when I saw some success. I cleared out a bottom shelf of one of the larger bookcases and the two batteries are wired in parallel from the back. I chose this VMAX AGM battery because I can't afford lithium iron right now and because weight isn't a problem for me. Weight is not an issue in an apartment because it isn't moving around like an RV or a boat is. VMAX also makes a companion charger that is designed to go specifically with their own stuff. This charger was well reviewed and was designed as a maintainer for the batteries. On the positive terminal of the battery is a 175 amp fuse. This is connected to the next purchase, which was the battery switch. This one is nice and sturdy and designed for marine applications. It is wired right before the battery so I can disconnect the batteries from everything else. This is both for safety and to help the smart charger sense the right resistance loads of the two batteries in parallel. Because 99% of the time, the switch is in the off position and the charger is charging and maintaining the batteries. After the main switch, the positive battery terminal is connected to this battery protect. This unit is designed to monitor the battery's voltage and to disconnect the load when you get down to a voltage that will damage the batteries. All of the parameters are set using a pretty cool, easy to use Bluetooth app on your phone. 
There is a 60 amp version and a 100 amp version. After testing the system with the fridge and everything, it got nowhere near 60 amps, but I bought the 100 amp one in case I upgrade the system capacity in the future. Because I am using AGM batteries, they cannot be drained more than 50%. I set the cutoff voltage at 12.3 volts. Next in the Amazon cart was this inverter. It was a little on the pricier side, but I wanted a pure sine wave inverter. It is very well reviewed and it is very well built. It is 12 volt input only, so that locked me into a 12 volt system. I will explain my reasons for choosing a 12 volt system in coming videos. I now have the ability for the fridge and modem to survive a two or three hour rolling blackout. And in reality, it could go a few hours more. I've done many tests where these two batteries and inverter have kept the fridge on overnight. The next part of the project was to install three of these 20 amp outlets. I used these to create a patch panel and I really wanted the nice circuit breakers they have. The grid circuit was wired to an extension cord that plugged into the outlet behind the big bookcase. I tapped the ground line and created a bus bar that is connected to the grid's ground. Components that needed grounding were connected to this bus bar. Underneath the grid outlet is the generator outlet. That was wired to an extension cable that went outside to the balcony and to the generator. I will talk about the generator in a separate video. Underneath the generator outlet is the inverter outlet. This was wired from the front panel of the inverter and has the added bonus of providing an extra circuit breaker for the inverter. In this pic, you can also see the back of the light switch I wired in to turn on the little blue voltage meter. Also is a USB hub to charge devices from the inverter's USB port. It is more energy efficient to come off the 12 volt side of the inverter than going all the way up to 120 volts and then back down to 5 volts. Also note, the ground hub for the inverter is connected to the grid ground bus bar I mentioned earlier. The extension plug you see me patching into the three outlet patch bay is this filtered six outlet waiver strip on top of the bookcase. That has an extension cable running to the fridge and to the TV cabinet. Also seen here is one of the many night lights I have around the place that provides work light for when the power goes out at night. So let's see this thing in action. This video starts off with everything running on grid power. The top extension plug is the waiver strip that runs to the fridge and to the TV setup. The plug underneath is the battery charger. Once the grid power goes down, the APC UPS gives me 11 minutes to find alternate power and keeps everything AV related on. The fridge is off during repatching, however. I plug the waiver strip into the inverter and the APC UPS happily accepts 117 volts from the batteries. As you can see, the key to continuous power is the APC UPS that keeps everything on as I patch and unpatch the Weber plug-in strip from either the grid, the generator, or the batteries. It was worth getting that UPS just to not have to keep resetting the clock every time the power went out. All of the TV and AV gear and lights and music studio and the refrigerator all came out to around 400 watts. In a real emergency, the fridge, modem, and a light or two is only just around 100 watts. Keep in mind how a fridge works. It has an electric motor that kicks on at certain times and then spends quite a while in resting mode, not drawing too much power. Unfortunately, it is the initial power spike when the fridge motor kicks on that necessitates the need for a battery and inverter setup like this. Of course, it would be good if you could just use an APC UPS on the fridge itself, but that initial amp draw from the motor is just too much for that little guy to handle. Now that I had that completed, I moved on to adding some solar capability. I purchased four of these 100 watt panels to make a 400 watt array at 72 volts with the four panels in series. I will explain my solar decision making in a later video that is just on the solar component. The panels were placed on the roof, however it is a bit of a mission to get on the roof, so real pics will be shown in the solar video. The MC4 cable ran into the apartment through the hole and into this MPPT charge controller. I've been very happy with this charge controller and I must mention that the manual makes it very clear that you must never disconnect the battery while the solar panels are plugged in. This was important for me because I have that main breaker switch right in front of the battery that is 99% in the off position. I had to write myself a P-Touch message to make sure I have the solar panels disconnected with this quick release I made with an extension cable. There is a 30 amp fuse on the hot output line of the charge controller all the way to the positive terminal of the battery. 
Here is a video of the solar panels taking in some sun and feeding the batteries. Note that when the solar panels are in series, the amps are only around 3 or 4 amps. The amps from the solar charge controller to the battery is quite a bit higher though, at around 18 to 20 amps. Here is a nice chart I found that can help you choose which wire gauges you need for your system. So there you have it, an introduction to my apartment battery backup system. A 12 volt system with 400 watts of solar power and 120 amps of usable battery power. If you are really interested in building a solar battery backup system, I recommend that you watch everything Will Prowse has made. He is a very smart man, and during April 2020, when all of my friends were binge watching Tiger King, I watched every video he had and started my journey into the personal solar world. Please subscribe, like and comment, and I will be coming out with more videos that explain this battery backup in more detail.